Good evening. Welcome to everybody who's here, both in person and online. Uh, virtually everything you need to know is in our worship bulletin for tonight, including the hymns. So, uh, uh, are there any announcements to come before the congregation this evening? Hearing none, Charlie's going to ring the bell for us, and our very first hymn is Lamb of God, Pure and Holy. Lamb of God, Pure and Holy.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. To God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. You may be seated. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God and to deliver us took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament to my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain the grace and forgiveness of sins and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and, and Christ in him, and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death that he delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, Love one another as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes and one bread is made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by his Holy Spirit accomplish this in us. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of his Son Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Amen. Please rise. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. 
In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifested in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated for the reading of the Old Testament lesson. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is my, the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For, after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them, after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 22nd chapter. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of that house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and his apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. When he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, The cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, the light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 621.
Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be perfect and acceptable in your sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. There is something quite mysterious and wonderful when we celebrate the Lord's Supper on the night in which it was first given. When it is received with a truly penitential heart, it is like the view outside right now. Remember all the clouds we had earlier today? And it seems almost like right on cue. God opened the heavens for us to be able to see this beautiful, beautiful sign. Sign of his love, the warmth of his love. It is as if God himself gives us this beautiful sight to comfort and strengthen us. I remember a few years ago when a brother pastor died unexpectedly and the same thing happened right after his funeral beautiful gift of seeing the beautiful sunshine what a privilege to realize that the first Monday Thursday and to share tonight what Jesus shared with his disciples little wonder Martin Luther said I surely love it with all my heart, the dear blessed supper of my Lord Jesus Christ in which he gives me his body and his blood to eat and drink. It also bodily with my bodily mouth with the most sweet and gracious words given for you, shed for you. The words of our text emphasize the sacrament as a mystery. In the Greek word koinonia, koinonia, communion, participation, showing in or sharing rather in Christ and His benefits with one another. It is God's personal gift to each and every one of us to share with us the forgiveness of sins eternal life and salvation. However, there's another thought I would like to bring to your attention tonight as well. For we often forget that the Lord's Supper expresses the fellowship that we have with one another in Christ. The blessing of communion with Christ brings with it the gift of fellowship we must appreciate and practice and Folks, we were unable to do this last year and now are able to be here little by little. Praise the Lord that we can be together under one roof and celebrate this great gift that he has given us. This was never more clear to me than when I told you about my friend's funeral. His expressed wish was that the Lord's Supper be celebrated at his funeral. And that is just a tad unusual. I'm sure I wasn't the only LCMS pastor there who at first was a little bit surprised. But when all my brother pastors and I got up to go and receive the Lord's body and blood with our brother's body laying just a few feet away from us, it hit home. It hit home for all 35 of us pastors who were there as part of the body, along with everyone else. And it was a great comfort and peace in knowing that we were all connected together that way, among us and my friend's family. The Christian congregation in Corinth had a little trouble understanding that concept. And as many of you may know, back in those days, there was a discount meat market for the excess food being offered to idols. It was a little bit like the Walmart section of the town's different places to buy. 
Okay? The food was okay. But it had been offered to an idol. They knew the idols weren't real. So they had no problem eating well and for less. But some in this little church in Corinth were not as spiritually mature. So when they saw these brothers in Christ eating food that had been offered to idols, they were confused and offended. But rather than examining themselves and being sensitive to these people's lack of understanding, these more mature Christians, quote unquote, basically told these weaker and newer brothers in Christ, deal with it. That was their answer. Kind of sad. Instead of putting those people's needs before their, their own, <laughs> they seriously hurt the fledgling faith of some and destroyed others. The great churchman of the Missouri Synod a few years ago by the name of Martin Franzman put it this way, the cross put men under the sole leadership of Christ. They are free men. No idol has a claim upon them or power over them. But, but, a man's weaker brother whom Christ died for has a claim upon him which calls for self-sacrificing love. Got that? God expects us to share self-sacrificing love. For our brothers. Now, what does this have to do with the Lord's Supper? Well, as St. Paul puts it, communion puts us squarely into the context of brotherly love within the church. For receiving this holy sacrament is a clear confession that we belong to Christ. And receiving this sacrament is also a clear confession, guess what, folks? That we belong to one another that we are indeed true brothers and sisters in Christ, members of the same family. How much we need that message in our world today as so many are tempted to commit sins of idolatry, of selfishness, and say, I'm right, I'll do whatever I want, and I don't care what others think. My friends, real love is the body of Christ. It's not easy to achieve. There is always a temptation to try and do it ourselves, as if by sheer willpower we can break the chains of sin in our thoughts and in our bodies and do it ourselves but it just doesn't work. We need the power of Christ to be lifted above the everyday world. We need the power of Christ to fly together in the unity of faith. You heard that word recently rolling off a politician's lips? We need unity in our country. Well, I got a news flash for you. They probably wouldn't know unity if somebody had it spray painted on a baseball bat and they got smacked with it. In Christ, in Christ, my friends, we do have the power of unity in our faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It is this love of Christ coming through this very sacrament that gives us the power to help our weaker and hurting brothers and sisters and to give all the glory to God. That's why we got the stuff accumulating out in the hallway. We are getting rid of it soon, right, Gail? Fabulous. It's nice to see it, but it's time. There is a time it's got to go. April 12th. All right, amen to that. And I'm sure those people will be one, you know, very, very happy to see it. What's that? That's next Sunday. April 12th, no, the 11th is next Sunday, uh, following Sunday. 
It'll be Monday, the following day. What a wonderful way to show the love that we have in Christ with folks who have so little right next door to us. And it's easy, isn't it? Most of the stuff that we're collecting can be gotten at uh, Ocean State Job Lot for next to nothing. And what a great way to share our love for these people. Now, it has been suggested that the celebration of the Lord's Supper is the celebration of God's grace breaking through into the world. And I would agree with that. Well, it's going to be just like the sun breaking through from the clouds today. The sun will break through just like Jesus did that first Easter, breaking out of the bonds of death and coming forth and showing himself alive. So for Jesus' sake, my friends, I ask you to come tonight and celebrate our oneness and his victory over sin, death, and the power of Satan. Amen. Please rise. <laughs> May now the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Please remain standing. We'll be doing the bidding prayer right after the offering is brought forward. Thank you. Please join me in the bidding prayer. Uh, the A is meant for assistant, but I don't have an assistant, so I'll be reading that. The P stands for pastor, that's me, so I'll be reading that. The C stands for congregation. You read that, okay? Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church that our God, Lord God, would defend her against all the assaults and temptations of the adversary and keep her perpetually in the true foundation, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ and in the word of his truth. Keep, we ask you, in safety the works of your mercy so that your church spreads throughout all nations that may be defended against the adversary and may serve you in true faith and persevere in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for all the ministers of the word, for all vocations in the church, and for the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our catechumens that our Lord God would open their hearts and the door of his mercy, that having received the remission of all their sins by the washing of regeneration, they may be mindful of their baptism and evermore be found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty God and Father, because you always grant growth to your church, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that rejoicing in their new birth by the water of holy baptism, they may forever continue in the family of those whom you adopt as your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. O merciful God, Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of man, and because you have ordained for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of those who do well, all the powers that exist in all the nations of the world, we humbly pray that you graciously regard your servants 
especially our President, Congress, and United States, our Governor, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, our Lord God Almighty, that he would deliver the world from all error, take away disease, ward off famine, set free those in bondage, and grant health to the sick, and safe journey to all those who travel. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, may the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you graciously come before you, so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who are outside the church, that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error, call them to faith in the true and living God and his only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and gather them into his holy family, the church. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death, but the life of all, hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of you. Free them from their error. And for the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for peace, that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as is fitting for all Christians. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory, and Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all concord, grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace and concord that we may serve you in true fear, to, pay, to the praise and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our enemies, that God would remember them in mercy and graciously grant them such things as are needful for them and profitable for their salvation. O almighty everlasting God, through your only Son, our blessed Lord, you have commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you that by your gracious visitation all our enemies may be led to true repentance and may have the same love and be of one accord and one mind and heart with us and with your whole Christian church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the fruits of the earth that God would send down his blessings upon them and graciously dispose our hearts to enjoy them according to his own good will. O Lord God, Father Almighty, by your word you created and you continue to bless and uphold all things. We pray you so to reveal to us your word, our Lord Jesus Christ, that through his dwelling in our hearts, we may by your grace be ready, made ready to receive your blessings on all the fruits of the earth and whatsoever pertains to our bodily need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Finally, let us pray for all things for which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, holy. Go ahead. Lord God of Sabbath, of the Sabbath, behold, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, 
Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. At your command, Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet in mercy you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks that on Calvary you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us, like Abraham our father, to trust in your promise now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood that has been shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit being abide with you all. Amen. Amen. This time we have the stripping of the altar. Please remain standing in place. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And you, our fathers, trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you I was cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me. The strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life, from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow, shall bow all those who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. <laughs> 